Hello, I'm Terry White, Worldwide Design Evangelist for Adobe Systems. And since I only have a few minutes, I thought I'd show you my top five favorite things about the new InDesign CS5. Now this is in no way the complete list of things that are new, but these are my five favorites. So let's start off with this document. We'll go to our Pages panel. And on our Pages panel, we'll jump up to the top page here. And what I want to do is I want to right click on that page and insert a new page. And of course, it will insert that new page based on the cover here that we're going to choose and there's our new page but the difference is I can now grab the new page tool and for the first time in InDesign you can now have multiple page sizes with different um, orientations as well so I've just created a skinny page next to this one that page could also be tall or wide I now have multiple page sizes and orientations a thing that people have been asking for for quite a long time so we'll pop over to the Layers panel. We'll take advantage of this new page we just created. We'll create a, or click on our cover model art there, and we'll click on the background art, and we'll just now expand that over to bleed onto the new page. So very happy about that. We'll go ahead and turn on the flap text that goes along with that. And cool to be able to do this and work with the new Layers panel, by the way, which we can now move up uh, that particular layer and have it above the bar at the back. So, cool to be able to do that. Let's go ahead and jump over to the next thing. I could spend more time here, but you get the idea. So we're just going to go ahead and switch over to page 5. On page 5, actually not page 5, we're going to go to page 6. On page 6 here, we have an issue where we've got uh, the headline is not right. So let's go ahead and correct this headline. It would really look better if it were spanning across both columns. So we'll just simply go ahead and choose that, and now there's a simple command called span to that will span it across two columns and automatically balance everything else without me having to create yet a new frame and new workflow. So let's go ahead and now switch over to a different page where we've got a similar issue to, to um, or a different frame, where we got a similar issue to deal with. Same thing here, we're going to go ahead and, and just make that three columns instead of two. We'll go ahead and highlight this text and we'll say that it now spans two columns. Awesome. And then we'll highlight this text and we've got a different issue. Whereas if we have more room on this one column, it'd be great if we could now split this across two columns. Awesome to be able to do that right inside of InDesign with simple commands, very easy to do. All right, so the next thing we'll do is we'll jump over to another spread here. We'll go to page 14 and on page 14, I need to borrow some content from another InDesign document. So we'll go to Mini Bridge, and inside Mini Bridge, I've got this one InDesign document. We'll right click on it and say Show Linked Files. We can now grab files that are linked in a different InDesign document and drag them into this InDesign document. We can hide Mini Bridge for a moment. We'll go ahead and drag out this one frame here. And in this one frame, I'm just going to hit the up arrow key and the right arrow key to divide that into four equal frames. Very cool. All right, so next, let's go ahead and uh, auto fit that. And we'll um, fill frame proportionally. We'll grab our move tool. We can move this up. I know I'm showing you more than five things, but I just can't resist. We've got those in place now. Now the fifth or the fourth thing is going to be the new gap tool. We'll go ahead and switch to our layers panel just for a moment. We'll turn off that background layer so it doesn't interfere with the gap tool. And now we can actually detect the gaps between the frames and automatically adjust and resize as we drag our frames around. Interactive frame placement and gap placement based on this. We hold down a shift key, then we're only doing the top two versus the bottom two. Very cool. Can't wait. Love it. One more thing real quick, four and a half things, interactive uh, live corner effects. And of course, now we can shift, use that tool to get different corner effects for each corner. All right, next and last but not least, we'll switch over to a different document. Before we look at this document, we'll switch over to the browser. And this is an interactive document created 100% inside of InDesign. I could actually flip through it. I get sound, I get animations, I get um, rollovers, I get slideshows, I even get flash video to be able to play directly inside of this document, all in flash, all created in InDesign without writing a single line of code. So let me show you a couple of these real quick. We'll just go ahead and scroll down our spread here. We'll grab this live animation text. We'll go ahead, uh, switch to our new interactive workspace so we can get all the things we need. 
Now that we're in our interactive workspace, we'll switch to the animation panel. We'll go ahead and choose that we want that to fly in from the top. Now that it flies in from the top, the next thing we want to do is we want to adjust the timing for it so that it plays at the beginning of the animations. And we want to loop our flies so that they play all together. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and preview this directly inside of InDesign. It will load an instance of the Flash Player in a panel, and I get to see all my animations happen, including my rollovers. For that slideshow, we can wire that up really quickly. Just go ahead and select all of those images, align them to their lefts and tops. Next thing we'll do is we'll create a multi-state object of those images. Again, I'm doing all of this without writing a single line of code, just by choosing single or simple options and panels. Now that I've got that, we'll make the buttons actually control it. So we'll say that that goes to the previous state, and the right button goes to the next state of that, of that multi-state object. And now we're ready to preview, and we've got our slideshow, we've got our animation, we've got everything built and ready to go. So creating interactive content inside of InDesign without having to write code would be my fifth thing. At this point, all I'd have to do now is export it out. I can export it out as a Swift file, ready to play, just like we saw the one in the browser, or I can export it out even as an FLA file to be opened up in Flash Professional and continue. That's it, five cool, really, think, really cool things, my top favorite things inside of InDesign CS5. I will show you more as the months go on on the creativesuitepodcast.com. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.